All the uh, indications were in the lead up and during the vote that it would be extremely close, perhaps down to uh, two or three votes. But in the end, there was a margin, a winning margin of 10 votes for Malcolm Turnbull. So Australia's brutal political culture has claimed another victim. Tony Abbott, who won an election just over two years ago, was really never a deeply popular figure among the electorate. And uh, really the reason why his prime ministership has crumbled is because he lost the support of the electorate and ultimately the governing Liberal Party. So uh, the people of Australia will now soon have a new prime minister and uh, a new deputy prime minister. The former foreign minister, Julie Bishop, will be Malcolm Turnbull's number two. So uh, it's all change at the top of Australian politics. What has been a very dramatic day here in the Southern Hemisphere has now developed into a fairly dramatic evening in terms of Australia changing its political leadership. We're seeing all of the politicians filing out at the moment, Phil, as you speak. What will Mr Turnbull's first priority be, presumably party unity? Well, that remains a huge challenge. Uh, the next election here in Australia isn't scheduled until next year. So Malcolm Turnbull uh, will have a big challenge on his hand convincing the electorate that a divided and a fractured governing party uh, can be uh, re-elected with, uh, with trust because, of course, politics always comes down to trust and the people of Australia, the voters here, will have been watching events unfold in the last few hours with a sense of bewilderment. Here is uh, a Conservative government that uh, seems to be ripping itself apart so a huge, huge challenge for the new man at the top. Will he have enough time to heal the wounds before an, ele uh, an election here due uh, in the next uh, year or so? Of course, uh, an election may come sooner than that. Uh, but once again, that's all down to the political intrigue that's uh, currently Australian politics. Christina, what's your take on how the public view all of this? Because one of the country's national sports, you've got cricket and rugby, but you've got the leadership spill as well. Politics, it's, uh, it's also a national sport of ours, I think. Um, I think Phil's right. A lot of people will be looking this at this with a sense of bewilderment, what is going on in Canberra, that this can happen so easily and seemingly uh, very quickly as well. Uh, everybody knew that the leadership was an issue that was sort of bubbling away, but the fact that within a day it can kind of be brought to a head and a new Prime Minister can come in is quite a shock, I suppose, for some people. But you were telling me earlier that when you came into work this morning you knew something was going to happen from your contacts, but this is not what a lot of people are expecting, this a change in the leadership. Yes, absolutely. And we were often, uh, I guess the media is sometimes criticised for, for maybe reporting on things too much or reporting rumours and things like that. But in a place like Canberra, and especially in that pressure cooker of Parliament House, where there's smoke, there's fire. The, a lot of the journalists would have been uh, fed different lines from different parties and different officers and different factions within the parties as well. But uh, at the same time, I guess a lot of people just won't really know what's going to happen until all the MPs go into those rooms and actually have a vote. Phil, so the fifth Prime Minister for Australia in eight years, he'll be the country's 29th Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, is the feeling that he is going to perhaps drag the party and even the country possibly back into the centre a bit more? Well, there are some very big issues for Malcolm Turnbull to confront. Uh, national security has been an issue that Tony Abbott has concentrated on uh, extremely carefully and uh, with great focus during uh, his two years in power. But remember that Mr Turnbull did vote for laws that would strip dual nationals of their Australian citizenship should they be deemed to be in um, support of terrorist organisations. So um, I'm not necessarily sure that Mr Turnbull will change uh, a huge part of Australia's national security stance in the short term. Remember, he was the head, as we heard earlier, of the Australian Republic movement, uh, leading that movement into an unsuccessful referendum on ditching Queen Elizabeth as head of state in 1999. He was, as Environment Minister, uh, quite a, a divisive figure in a previous carnation, in a previous Conservative government. So I think T um, Malcolm Turnbull will, uh, of course, change the direction and tone of uh, the Australian government. But I don't think that he'll drag it um, uh, to wholesale to the centre, given that uh, he knows that an election is only around the corner due in the next 12 months or so.
Christina, surely in Australia, like it is everywhere, it's the economy that people vote on when it comes to the election. And he's got pretty good credentials, uh, Malcolm Turnbull. Do you think that the, the voters are going to trust him with the economy? I think uh, it's up in the air at the moment. He was uh, a shadow treasurer once upon a time as well in, when he was in opposition. Uh, he is also, as I said before, uh, he was a businessman before he went into politics. So he knows uh, how to play the game of the economy as, uh, as well. Um, one of the things that he cited this morning, or this morning in Canberra time, when he came out and said that he would be challenging Tony Abbott was economic leadership as well. Um, but he has also said, just through uh, lines coming out of his office, that he will back everything that came out in the last budget, which was in May. So at this, while we will see him try to put his own mark on running the economy. It's uh, up in the air as to whether or not he will make drastic changes from what has been promised already by Abbott.